to announce bipartisan legislation that I will be introducing today that will uh, require insurance companies to cover the cost of wigs for children. Um, and these are children with a medical condition or are undergoing medical treatment that cause hair loss. Uh, joining me here today is uh, Representative uh, Plawecki, who's a co-sponsor of the bill, along with Representative Gregg, who's also a co-sponsor, and Maggie Varney, founder and CEO of Wigs for Kids Wellness Center in Salon, located in St. Clair Shores. Also with us is Jalene Davis, who was diagnosed at the age of eight with uh, alopecia, a condition that causes hair loss. Um, and she has made the issue of hair loss a part of her platform as the current reigning Miss Spirit of the state and as a competitor for Miss Michigan. So Jaylene has advocated for children and the need for insurance coverage. Many of us know a child that has suffered hair loss. Um, and a lot of people would assume that insurance covers the cost of a wig. However, that is not always the case. Insurance companies do not have to cover a wig for a child suffering hair loss because of a medical issue. Yet insurance companies do cover prosthetics for children, such as a leg prosthetic. A wig is a prosthetic for a child suffering from hair loss, and it should be covered. My bill would require insurers to provide coverage for human or synthetic hair replacements to children 18 years and under who have experienced hair loss as a result of a medical condition or the treatment of a medical condition. In my district, the 18th district, uh, there is a wonderful organization, uh, Wigs for Kids, um, and they have at no charge helped provide, cut, and style more than 2,000 wigs for children here in the state of Michigan. And they do this because there's an incredible need all across our state because insurance companies do not cover a wig prosthetic for children. Now many families rely on organizations for wigs because it's just as I said, um, medical bills or other circumstances mean that the cost of a wig could be far out of reach. Um, many families uh, in Michigan don't know about or are unable to access this kind of assistance and the child must go without. So hair loss can be a debilitating, uh, can cause debilitating self-confidence issues and make it even more difficult for a child to fit in while coping with the emotional, social, and psychological distress that comes with, you know, a condition that causes hair loss. And making coverage for hair for a hair prosthetic mandatory for insurers is one way that we can help these children um, while they're, you know, dealing with this, you know, very uh, difficult um, ordeal in their life. And we know that at least 13 other states mandate this coverage and Michigan should do the same without question. And now I'd like to turn it over to Maggie Barney, the founder and CEO for Wigs for Kids. Maggie? Thank you. Thank you, Representative Roberts. Mm -hmm. I'm a licensed cosmetologist. I've been in the beauty industry for about 40 years, a business owner, and I founded Wigs for Kids in 2003 because I have had the honor and privilege of serving adult patients in our community. I volunteer my time for the last 28 years and work with adult patients. And it was through that class that I teach that a 16-year-old came to my class and asked, what do you do when you're a kid and you need a wig? And I'm in the industry and I thought, don't you go to a wig salon? But they don't make wigs for children. Insurance doesn't cover this. And they're so labor intensive and cost prohibitive that they're not easily access accessible to the families. They can't afford them. So I am so honored to be here today in hopes that our state will embrace this cause and will mandate that insurance companies do support this bill. And thank you for having the heart and being the voice for these children and speaking up. You know, people say to me, you know, with our program, 65% of our kids do have cancer, but 30% of our kids have alopecia. We also have children who have hydrocephalus and trichotillomania. There's so many disorders that cause hair loss. And now they have some place that they can come, but they need to be able to go wherever they are throughout the state. Many of them don't have the capabilities to even get to us. We have to send them gas cards so they can afford to drive to us to get their wig for free. So the need is really great. And on a personal note, I just want to say, I share a personal story with you. Even my kids who are in the hospital, 
who are going home knowing that they are nearing the end of their life, they still, on the way home, will stop and pick up a wig before they go home because they don't want to go home and see their friends and their family the way they look. They want to die with dignity. They want to say goodbye to their loved ones. So it matters whether they're three years old or 18 years old. It matters. And thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Maggie. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Jaylene Davis is going to uh, talk with us as well. Jaylene. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here today. It's always been a dream and an inspiration of mine to entertain crowds of a thousand to a mere family and friends luncheon. And I was doing just that at the age of five and six and seven, and I was living the ultimate dream of being on Broadway in New York. And then I was diagnosed with alopecia universalis, which caused me to lose all of my hair on my entire body. But what they don't tell you in the diagnosis or when you're at the hospital wondering why your hair is falling out is that you're also going to lose your self-confidence. You're going to lose your self-esteem. You're going to lose the dreams that you've held on to. And you're going to lose the thing that matters most. And it's the drive and the passion to live, the drive and the passion to achieve. At the age of eight, I was completely bald and completely lacking my self-esteem. I was depressed and introverted. I wouldn't talk to children that have formerly were known as my best friends. I came in contact with Wigs for Kids, a nonprofit organization, at the age of 10. So for two years, I was being bullied. I was being called an alien. I was being called a boy on the playground and told to go fetch my hat like a dog. I wasn't normal in anybody else's eyes. A hairpiece can do just that. A hairpiece can fix a child that is aching to feel normal again. And how, you may ask, I know this, because it did for me. I feel normal. I am normal because of a hairpiece. It makes the largest difference when you go out in public, when you don't want empathetic or sympathetic stares. When you don't want people to come up to you and say, I am praying for you, or here, let me pay for your meal because you just want to be normal. You just want to fit in somewhere. A wig has done that for me. A wig has done that for thousands of kids, not only in Michigan, but across the world. A hair piece can make the difference from a child that's thinking about taking their life to a woman that is competing in a pageant. I am now able to say that I can step up on a stage in front of thousands and a panel of five judges that are ultimately judging me describing me based on a physical beauty that they see. And that physical beauty involves my hair, whether or not it be mine. A hair piece gave me the confidence back. A hair piece, a cranial prosthetic, a wig, made the world of a difference. So thank you so much for considering sponsoring this bill along with us and co-signing it, passing it through, and mandating coverage for cranial prosthetics across Michigan for children. I truly appreciate it, and I know all the other children will as well. So thank you, Representative Roberts and her team, for doing this for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jaylene. Um, I think the story has been told quite beautifully uh, by Maggie and Jaylene, the, the absolute need uh, for insurance companies here in Michigan to cover hair prosthetics for children. Um, I, I am uh, very honored that this legislation is, is supported by Democrats and Republicans. Um, it's going to be introduce introduced today, and we're hopeful for a hearing and for swift passage through the House.